Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to all the incredible experiences we have right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and when it comes to exploring the great state of Texas, it is a shame we only get so many years to do so. But the confines of time and space get blown away when you start talking about the prehistoric creatures that used to roam this land back when this continent looked completely different. So we headed to Bastrop to see what it was like when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Driving along Highway 71 between Austin and Bastrop, you never know what's lurking in the central Texas trees. Most of the time you'll find picturesque Texas landscapes, but if you turn on the other side of the road, you won't find lost pines, you'll find a lost world. I did it. Ah. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> It'll sneak up on you. Austin Nunez and his family are crazy about the Cretaceous period, so they created the Dinosaur Park. So well, I'm assuming someone had to have a big love for dinosaurs. For sure, it was me. <laughs> You're the luckiest little kid in the world. <laughs> I'm sure that's what my son would think. Feels like it at times, looking back on it, yeah, for sure. Since 2004, the Dinosaur Park has been showcasing what the world was like when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. A very niche thing, I don't know exactly what to call it all the time. It's like an outdoor museum, we like to say. You can tell when you guys open up, you start hearing the kids come through here, like, just exactly, having them laugh. Yeah. Let's go on a dino adventure. Let's do it. <laughs> Is Barney here? I don't think so. No, yeah. I think he's busy today. He didn't make the cut. <laughs> no, not this time. Ah, so the entrance. Yes, this is our grand little opening to the trail. This is our... where you say, welcome to Dinosaur Park. Exactly. On a short half mile hike through the hill country, you'll come across 30 dinosaurs. And you never know when one's gonna pop up on you. Oh, and just like that, we're in the danger zone, man. I see a little dinosaur lurking in the woods there. Yes. Well, is that what a velociraptor really looked like? This is velociraptor. This okay. is our first dinosaur on the trail. And this is what it actually looked like. The ones in Jurassic Park were made a lot bigger, a lot more robust, just to up the scare factor. Yeah, he looks like if he latched onto your arm, you would have a hard time getting him off. For sure. He had sharp teeth, sharp claws, and he did have those things, the sickle claw that you do see in Jurassic Park. Where do you even get these kind of dinosaurs? I mean, does, is there a dinosaur maker or how does that work? We've had local artists do some, we've had international, we've had whoever will do them. It's actually pr quite difficult to find our artists who will do some of the larger ones. The smaller ones are generally easier, like people are willing to do a six foot, eight foot dinosaur statue. And then you'll see later on the trail, there's 40 foot, 100 foot dinosaurs out there that we have to just find whoever will do them for the best price. Uh, this dinosaur always reminds me of my uh, wife. Very hard headed. <laughs> hey yes, this is the Stegosaurus. And exactly the first thing you notice is that large dome shaped skull. Sure. This dinosaur would have used that head probably to defend itself or and for like mating sort of rituals like rams. Okay. And yeah, that would have been its like primary defense. You'll notice has a little Texas symbol. Sure. Those are for the dinosaurs that lived in our state. The, oh, okay. the creatures that were found here. Before Texas was even really Texas. Pretty much. One of my favorites, everyone's favorite when they're a kid. Triceratops. Yes. This is Triceratops, um, one of the most recognizable dinosaurs, as you were saying. He was very powerful. A group of these would have been very, very pertinent force to be reckoned with. Paracelor for 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 <laughs> All right, say it for me, Austin. This is our Parasaurolophus. Yeah. This was our, one of the biggest hadrosaurs, and it's very much defined by that big crest on its head. What's the one dinosaur you're missing that you really want? One dinosaur that I really want, um, I'd say like a Giganotosaurus. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Giganotosaurus. No worries. You are rattling off names that stunning me. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you can learn something here today. Yeah. Well, here's a big long one. Yes, the longest one, actually. Diplodocus? Yes, this hey. is our Diplodocus. Oh, see, I was wrong. <laughs> there's a lot of dinosaurs that um, could claim the title of longest dinosaur. This was one of the ones that um, is up there. Is this the one uh, Fred Flintstone used to use for the crane too, right? It could have been. <laughs> could you imagine the barbecues we could have if these things were around? Honestly, it would probably be intense. Yes. 
Would they be like white meat like chicken or would they be like beef? I wonder, uh, red meat. I honestly do not know. That's a good question. <laughs> it seems thinking about the 66 million years since dinosaurs last roamed the earth has made me hungry. But just like any good old amusement park, you'll have to pass through the gauntlet that is the gift shop to get out. I've never seen so much dinosaur stuff in my life. Anything dinosaur that is sold, we try and sell it. Well, we're sold on the dinosaur park being the perfect stock for your fossil-loving family on the Texas bucket list. What is it about dinosaurs? Why are we so enamored by them and so curious about them uh, from a young age? And it's even... probably just because they're, they're so different to what we have in terms of real animals. Like the closest thing we have is like crocodiles or birds. There's just general fascination that I've seen with them that just, I can't really explain it myself even.